Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to present to you uh, my work that I realized in the, the supervision of uh, Professor Maya Butokao at uh, Lipsis at uh, Sorbonne University. So the, this work is about uh, dynamics situ emulation. So since uh, it is about uh, distributed computing, um, uh, I will a uh, little bit introduce uh, the field. So let's imagine that you have uh, two clients that want to access to a service, so let's say Facebook or a, a digital uh, banking system or whatever. Uh, they could just would like they, they, they you can be interested to send some requests and receive some uh, answers to this request. But the issue is, of course, uh, this is not uh, resilient. So if there is a crash, then there is no there is no more uh, uh, service. So we could be tempted just say okay it's, it's easy you just have to have several servers that can communicate to, to each other and now this is uh, more or less the same so you have uh, the clients that can access to a service but now the service is not only one unique server but uh, uh, several servers and uh, you should have this illusion that you access to one unique service so this is supposed to be resilient in the sense that if you have some crashes uh, among uh, the set of servers that are supposed to uh, implement uh, the service, then you still have this illusion that uh, the, the service works. So it is like uh, you have uh, the illusion of a super robust uh, unique machine. And it can still work if now you have some uh, uh, servers that are corrupted by a malicious uh, attacker. So it works with not too many crashes, not too many uh, attackers. But in both cases, you have this illusion that you, you access to, to, to one uh, unique uh, machine. So this, uh, this illusion is called um, uh, atomicity and the literature and that shown that more or less uh, equivalent uh, to the problem of consensus. Uh, I guess the first paper about it was the uh, program uh, from Lampor, Chestak and Pease. And uh, okay, so the, this, Program has been studied uh, a lot in the literature. Okay, this is not uh, hyper intuitive here. You, so the consensus is just say the servers have to agree. So typically, in fact, this is not intuitive in the sense that uh, they have to agree on the order of the, the requests that have been sent concurrently by the clients. And if they are able to agree on the, this uh, 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 on this uh, request, then they can order in just one unique order and uh, and perform the the, the execution that is uh, attached to the uh, the execution of a unique machine if you have this uh, total order on the request um so okay you can ask the question how many uh, nodes that you can uh, by present nodes so the malicious nodes can you tolerate and there are a lot of literature and it depends on the model so uh, uh, typically in the fully asynchronous uh, model if you use a deterministic uh, Algorithm. It has been shown by uh, uh, Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson that the problem is impossible. And if you have, uh, if you relax the model and you lose uh, some uh, uh, weaker model, then it is possible to solve the problem. Uh, well, it is also possible to say now uh, you do not have clients, you do not have servers, but you have just nodes, and uh, everybody is playing the the same role. So everybody wants to have this illusion to access to a unique machine, even if you have concurrent access to it. And what would be very, very nice is to have a, a permissionless uh, replicated state machine, in the sense that here you have five nodes and uh, you want to have, you want to allow the access to anybody. So you can go to a new, uh, new distributed system where you have a, a lot of, of new guys who, who come or who can, they, they can come, they can leave, uh, everybody can do wh what they want. So you have a this notion of dynamicity. So the, uh, yeah, the, the networks behave dynamically. Um, before we, and yeah, so you have a lot of other guys that can come there after and you do not know yet who will, uh, who will come in the, in the system. Um, one issue is the problem of civil attack. So you, it seems that you can't uh, prevent uh, the fact that one unique uh, malicious guy will simulate uh, several uh, processes so that they will 
uh, corrupt more than one half of uh, the, the system so that it is impossible, as we have seen before, to uh, solve the consensus. And so it is impossible to, uh, to ensure uh, the atomicity. And so it is impossible to have the illusion of one unique mass. And a solution that has been proposed by Bitcoin and the other blockchain uh, thereafter is to say, oh, but look, if you have a sort of bounded resource, like uh, proof of like work, uh, power of computation, uh, like money or whatever, then you can avoid this kind of civil attack. And now it's possible to have um, this uh, permissionless distributed state mesh. So it's very nice. Uh, there are a lot of tools who, that are used. So you have notion of uh, randomness. We have seen that uh, if you want to uh, tolerate uh, a lot of uh, of uh, Byzantine guys uh, in an asynchronous uh, process, then you, you, you need a, a notion of uh, randomness. Uh, you have a notion of synchrony. Uh, you, know, you have notion of uh, cryptography and you have notion of uh, dynamics. So, okay, it's pretty nice. Uh, it is possible to do these things. Uh, you have some examples, like typically algorithms is a nice example of, uh, of blockchain that use all this, uh, these tools. So there is notion of uh, uh, randomness, uh, uh, synchrony, uh, encryption, and dynamicity. And the question is, how much uh, do you trust uh, such a such a blockchain? So typically, uh, do you really trust uh, Algorand? How many, how much money will you gamble that uh, it will never happen any any issue? Uh, it's not trivial. So a good way to uh, increase your trust on uh, this kind of system is to have a nice uh, mathematical framework uh, to be able to have a very serious formalization and then eventually maybe uh, to delegate the proof of the safety and the liveness of the system to another machine so i am a, i am a human i know that i can make a mistake and even if my paper has been accepted in a very well-known conference I'm not 100 percent sure that uh, it will work if I, I, I have to to write the, the code method. So uh, I would like to have uh, a very nice formalization for to delegate the proof to a machine, but also uh, to convince myself that I didn't make any mistake. So in the story, uh, I guess, in my view, it started with um, Lynch and Tuttle. So for me, this is the, the first time that the, the, that um, a very serious mathematical framework um, appear to capture this notion of a distributed computing. Uh, so the idea is the following one. So you can find uh, this uh, mathematical framework in this uh, very uh, well-known book, this read algorithm from Nancy Lynch. So the idea is to say, okay, every, um, every piece of the distributed system is a, a box with, so this is state machine, with some states, some action, and they can communicate to each other. So the, the first brick of the system is what they call input output uh, automata. So you do not have to read uh, all the details of the uh, of this description, it's just what has been written in this book. And okay, so you have an automaton, like classic automaton. So you have a, a set of states, a set of actions. And you have some set of transitions that are only just a uh, triple uh, of uh, state, action, state. But now what is new is that you have what they call signature. So you have a partition among uh, the, the actions. So all the actions are not the same. Uh, all the actions are not the same ones. You have what they call input. So the ex external uh, actions. So the input actions, the output actions, and the internal actions. So the idea is that you have some actions that you, this is your own action. Typically, I, I am a process. I want to compute a multiplication. I want to say uh, uh, C is equal to uh, A times B. So I am in a certain state when I didn't uh, compute uh, this multiplication. And then I, I perform this uh, transition and I go to a new state uh, where I reach the state where I knew that C is equal to A times B. Um, so here you can see this is a process. Typically, it could be tempted to, to solve the consensus with other processes. So we would have some, uh, um, some input and output. So the input would be uh, initialize the, uh, the algorithm using host value V. Uh, so this is the input uh, init V. 
And uh, the output this ID, eventually, if it is able to decide, then you can decide. Uh, and you can communicate through uh, a network and you can send some messages to the other processes. So here you have a channel. So the channel receives some message from one process and you can uh, send it to, to the, to the attached uh, uh, process. And now you can compose them. So you can see you have one process that interacts with the other process who uh, directed the channels. And if you have this, then uh, you have a nice uh, mathematical framework to say, what does it mean that uh, an algorithm solves the task, uh, simulates something, uh, implements an object? So here in this uh, book, they uh, formalize this notion of, uh, of uh, simulation and uh, they, they give the, the idea of uh, saying, okay, I'm interacting with a Byzantine network in the sense that you have a lot of uh, processes and some of them are Byzantine, but I want to reason in another world where you have only crash and it is possible, it is possible to do this uh, by simulation in the sense that you have some uh, algorithms that are just black box that can emulate, that just make mute the, the Byzantine behaviors. And now you can, you can reason only on the, uh, a crash network where the, the processes can crash but can't uh, make any uh, Byzantine uh, behavior. Uh, and here again, you could uh, say, oh, can I, how can I uh, formalize it with a, a nice uh, mathematical framework? So with the EO automata, it is possible to say typically, uh, I, I have this user, U1, U2, U3. Uh, I want to provide them the illusion that they interact with just one object. X, and I want to do this by uh, exchanging some messages. And I, I can uh, formulate it uh, very precisely uh, with the, the formalism, and I can prove it. So in the studies of uh, Mark Tuttle, uh, typically they, they proved uh, some property in uh, exclusion, uh, in mutual exclusion algorithm. Uh, and then the literature um, made, made progress. So we, uh, we had notion of uh, probability. And uh, in the thesis of uh, Roberto Segala, still under the supervision of uh, Nancy Lynch, uh, they were able to uh, perform the uh, uh, formal verification of uh, some randomized consensus. Before, we have seen that it's impossible to solve the uh, consensus deterministically uh, under a fully asynchronous uh, uh, model. So now uh, it was, so before with the previous model, it was impossible to have a formal verification of some randomized processing that uh, after this thesis, it was uh, possible. And here again, you, you can add some uh, notion of, uh, of time and prove some, uh, some problem uh, that uh, uh, need uh, time assumption like the synchrony or partial synchrony. Uh, we had notion of um, uh, adversary and notion of uh, cryptographic encryption. So sometimes you want to solve problem uh, with some uh, cryptographic encryption, and typically you will have to ensure uh, some properties like uh, authentication. And if you want to be able to formulate it uh, properly, you need uh, a formalism, and it has been proposed uh, thereafter uh, by okay, can I see Lynch and I and a lot of uh, of, uh, of people who work on this problem. And here again, they were able to uh, formally prove uh, some nice object. So here, this is the Omnibus uh, Transfer Protocol, which is a very nice tool to, to build uh, other, uh, uh, other more sophisticated protocol. And uh, then there is this uh, notion of uh, dynamicity. So it has been proposed, uh, so still in the input output uh, automata uh, formalism, it has been uh, extended by uh, Polati and, uh, and Nancilic. So to summarize, you have all this, uh, all these tools that you want to be able to, to formalize. So notion of uh, time, uh, notion of randomness, notion of uh, uh, bonded adversary, and notion of uh, dynamicity. So the idea of dynamicity is that the, the set of automata that are participating to the distributed algorithm are not the same at each time. So this is the, the intuition. So here you have the literature with all the tools that have been uh, uh, used. And here, this is uh, our contribution. Uh, we propose 
uh, an extension of this formalism to deal with uh, dynamicity, randomness, and uh, a bounded adversary. And what do we want? We want to be able to state uh, the notion of implementation. So what does that mean implementation? I will refinate this definition thereafter. But the first intuition that you can have is to say that for any kind of environment that will um, uh, interact with both uh, uh, automata, uh, then it is indistinguishable uh, for the uh, uh, environment point of view. It's impossible for him to distinguish this uh, these two automata. So I will refine the definition to, at the very end, uh, be able to give you a more formal uh, definition. Of it. And this is quite important to have nice properties for this mathematical framework. One of the most well-known property and the most useful property is uh, the notion of uh, composability. So the point is that uh, typically, if you have uh, A, which is uh, implementing B, you want to have the composition of A between C uh, that is implementing uh, the composition of B between C. So if A, I don't know, if uh, this is a, um, a non-authenticated channel, so typically B can be the specification of an object, so like an authenticated channel, and A could be um, the real world uh, implementation of it. You want to be able to say that if there is this notion of implementation, when I combine some sub protocols together, I do not lose this notion of composability. And so this is practical for several reasons. The, the first one is for a human, this is uh, easier to, to reason on it, uh, to, to think about it. But also for, uh, for a machine, this is easier in the sense that you, you will uh, avoid some uh, combinatorial uh, explosion. And now for dynamicity, you want uh, another property, which is quite uh, the same idea. So before we add, uh, uh, an horizontal uh, approach, and now this is more a vertical approach. So the, the idea is that, let's assume you have A that is implementing B. Now I want to say that if I have uh, two automata that differ only on the fact that when the first one is creating A, the second one is creating B, then I, I preserve the notion of implementation. So if I have a certain binary relation between my two automata, A and B, I want to preserve this uh, binary relation uh, in the upper level, when I have uh, this uh, automata that will only create A and XB will only create B. So you, for example, you could imagine you have um, a phone and you, have, uh, you are downloading uh, some, uh, some apps and you could have the uh, mathematical specification of the apps and uh, the real world uh, code of the apps. And you want to say that, let us assume that your real uh, code of the, the apps implement the specification of this app, then yeah, if I have the phone and I uh, create and destroy again and again this app, then I still uh, preserve this notion of, uh, of implementation. And this notion of implementation can be, um, okay, can be extended with the notion of secure emulation. So this is more or less the same, but there are slight uh, subtleties, uh, slight differences. Uh, first, now um, the, the environment is able to make the, distinguish, the, the distinction, but with a negligible uh, probability. So typically, uh, let's imagine that you have a banking system uh, with cryptographic uh, uh, tools. And uh, if Alice wants to, to pay, of course, uh, she will uh, ask to, to use uh, her private key. And you can't avoid the fact that uh, Bob will try to guess uh, her private key and try to um, uh, to pay uh, something that she doesn't want. So in this scenario, there, there exists a non-zero probability so that the environment is able to make the distinction. However, uh, you can provide mathematical tools so that this probability is negligible. And so with secure remuneration, you want to, to deal with these aspects. And uh, here again, you want to achieve a notion of composability and notion of uh, monot monotonicity. So now uh, I finished uh, for the overall uh, view of uh, the idea of the motivation. And now we just present the mathematical foundations uh, for uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
okay, for to to analyze uh, typically uh, a permissionless blockchain or whatever. So we start with the uh, probabilistic uh, signature input output automata. So this is the layer zero of the system. So as before, you have some automata. So the, this is a state machine with a set of states. So this is the big Q with a start state. This is the, the, uh, the Q bar, a certain signature, and a certain set of transitions. But now there is uh, a little difference compared to before. The difference is that the signature is not uh, static. This is dynamic. So in fact, this is a function. This is a mapping from uh, the set of states to the set of possible signatures. So at each state, you can have a, a new uh, a new signature. And, it, and uh, also, it has been introduced by Segala, you can have um, uh, probabilistic uh, transition. So here, uh, let's imagine you have this uh, automaton A1, which is at, at uh, state Q1. Oh, sorry, I'm the, I'm the laptop. And uh, the action A is triggered. And now you could imagine that two uh, different states are possible, the orange one and the red one. And then you, you attach uh, a measure of probability to, uh, to this to distribution, to measure uh, the probability to, to reach a new state after a certain uh, action. So here you have the automaton U uh, who move from one state to another one. And now the, the signature uh, has changed. So typically before the, there was a, a, the action C, which was a, an output, D an input, and J a G, uh, an internal uh, action, and now uh, it changed. H is uh, the new internal action, and there is no more uh, C and D as external action. So you need to be able uh, to provide the notion of composability or composition. So here you have two different, uh, two different uh, automata that want to interact together, and you want to formalize this notion of uh, interaction. And so you have to have a, a an operation of uh, composition. So this is the parallel uh, double bar, double bars here. Uh, and so W is the result of the composition of U and D. Um, for, um, for, to be able to provide some uh, nice properties like uh, associativity or communicativity, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to, to have the, the common external uh, actions to become uh, output actions, but if if it's a problem for you, you can hide them and make them uh, internal actions. Here again, you can compose the transitions. So if you have uh, several uh, automata that are interacting together, uh, you can define the result of the uh, of the transitions. So typically here you have a one uh, up to a three who are interacting together. Uh, a could be uh, a shared action between a one and a two. And you can uh, you can define the new transition. So this is a uh, only a total probability law is supposed to preserve the, the intuition. And now uh, we are able to define uh, executions and traces. So an execution is just an alternating sequence of state and action. And a trace is uh, the projection from the execution world uh, to a sequence of external actions only. So this is only the external behaviors that you see with the trace. So here you can see uh, different possible executions. And so you could uh, typically start at uh, state Q0. So let's imagine a set of three processes uh, that want to typically solve the consensus. And uh, they can start. And uh, A could be the action to send a certain message uh, to, uh, to another process. And maybe uh, the process one that sent this message will before um, uh, use a, a random coin to decide the, the content of the message. So typically the message could be, uh, could have uh, as a content zero with the probability uh, one over two and one with the probability one over two. And now what we would like is to be able to uh, provide a measure of probability on the set of executions to be able to state some uh, logical proposition uh, on it. Uh, the issue is that there is a, an inherent uh, non-determinism uh, on the set of execution. Let's imagine you have uh, several processes that are here again running uh, uh, a distributed algorithm like a consensus algorithm. Uh, then there is an inherent non-determinism uh, in 
the order of uh, message delivery. So let's assume that uh, process uh, one and two send the message to process uh, uh, three. How can you decide that uh, process three will uh, receive the message one or the message two first? What is the message that you will uh, receive at the first time? So this is not obvious. You do not have a uh, measure of probability for it. So to solve this uh, non-determinism, you need to induce, introduce a new mechanism, which is called the, the scheduler. So the scheduler has been well studied uh, in the literature for a long time. So you have a lot of different models uh, and some hierarchy uh, among the, the schedulers. So basically a scheduler is just a function that map any execution to a, to, uh, a probability to the net do the next action that will be uh, triggered. So typically, at the state Q0, uh, there is a non determinism and you, you want uh, to have a scheduler that say, what is the probability to trigger A and what is the probability to trigger D? And with the scheduler, you, you solve the, uh, the non determinism. For uh, cryptographic uh, uh, protocols, it has been shown by, uh, by Kanetti et al. that uh, a certain class of scheduler is really well suited. Uh, so this is what they call the task schedulers. So this is only a sequence of tasks. And what is a task? A task is just a set of, a set of actions. And uh, either the, the, the task solves the non-determinism or not. If it solves, then you know the next action that you have to take. And if it's not the case, then you can ignore the, the task. So typically here, let's imagine you are at set Q0 and the next task is T1 where there is the action A and D, then you do not solve the, the non-determinism. So you, you cut a progress, you ignore T1. And now let's assume that T2, T2 is the, the next uh, task and there is only uh, A and E uh, as actions on this set. Then there is only A that can be triggered. So you solve the non-determinism and uh, you know that you have to, to trigger A. And if you have the, this task schedule, then it is possible to solve the non-determinism and to define a measure of probability. So this measure of probability, usually we call apply in the literature. Uh, so rho is the task schedule. Mu is a measure of probability of the, of the starting states. So usually you just use the delta as a direct. So this is a probability one for the, inter for the start state of the automata. So typically uh, here you will have a, a probability one for Q0, and then you can uh, recursively define uh, your measure of probability on the set of rooms uh, of ex executions. So, okay, it's pretty nice. We have um, the tools to formalize what is the measure of probability on the set of, uh, on the cones of uh, uh, executions. But now you want to capture the dynamicity. So since we have a um, uh, signature uh, input output automata, it will be easier for us. So the idea is that first we define what is a configuration. So a configuration, okay, this is a couple. Uh, the first element is just a set of automata. And the second element is just a mapping uh, from this set of automata to uh, the attached uh, state. So here, typically you have uh, a configuration. This is only uh, this set of automata. So you have five automata and you have five states, one for each automata. Here again, you can define uh, some uh, preserving uh, distribution probability uh, on, the, uh, on the set of states. And now uh, what is nice is that you can introduce uh, uh, the notion of dynamicity like this. Uh, what you can do is to say, uh, only consider, so I can uh, define some probabilistic distribution on configuration. And so I can uh, define some transition from one first configuration to another one where the set of automata is not the same. So here, after the action A, you take a random, uh, uh, a random state. And at this stage, there is new automata. So here there is A4 that appeared. So A4 has been created and A1 has been destroyed. So to be destroyed, uh, an automata has to reach a special state where each signature is the empty set. So it's supposed to, uh, to be compatible with the intuition. Uh, if you are an automaton and your signature is the empty set, then you can't cooperate with the other ones. 
So it is like you have been destroyed. In fact, you never you you never cooperate with the other one. So this is more or less the same. And uh, an automata an automaton that has been created uh, start as is I as its own uh, start state. So you can formalize it. And now what you can do is to capture the notion of dynamicity in one new kind of automata, which is uh, what we call probabilistic configuration automata. So on the right here, you have several classic uh, probabilistic signature input output uh, automata that can be composed together. They have to be compatible and you can destroy them like V here has been destroyed to this state from this new one and W has been created after, thereafter. And all these states can be pushed in the state of this new kind of automata, which is X. So of course there are a lot of syntactic rules uh, to ensure. So I won't, I won't go into the details, but you have some uh, uh, properties that have to be uh, ensured. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, what is the question? Yeah, the blue node, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, up to you. It's up to you, you can define it. So typically what you can imagine here, uh, V could send a message to you, oh, I will leave the system now, uh, change your signature, but maybe you can just disappear so that there is still uh, this, uh, uh, this external actions to you. So you have to define properly your system so that for all the possible executions, the overall system is still compatible. So it's not defined for the moment. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does nothing if it remains, but uh, typically you could, you could have a W, could have another um, output action that could be D. And now you have to ensure the uh, composability of the uh, entire system. If you want to say something which is uh, uh, well defined, uh, it's up to you to to uh, to say some simple systems. So you um, typically uh, the the composability uh, requires that uh, two different automata can't have the same um, uh, output actions, and so you have to provide it. In the in the specification of a system, so typically if uh, you is changing, and say oh it's nice because V uh, uh, will disappear and so uh, you won't have this output action E. So now I am uh, I, I have the right to have this uh, output uh, action E, but in fact there is W which is coming with the same uh, uh, output action E. Then it's not compatible and then your system is not uh, correctly defined. So you, it's up to you to uh, define it properly to, to avoid this, uh, this issues. But of course, what you can do, you just say, okay, in fact, uh, an action is labeled with uh, a unique ID because there is a unique ID per uh, automata. So what you can do typically is just labelize the, uh, the action with the ID of the automata. Uh, okay, so, so here you have three new, um, uh, tools to uh, define properly uh, what is a probabilistic configuration of the matter. So you have config. So config is just a mapping from a state of the PCA uh, to a configuration. You have uh, created. So created uh, just give you the, the, the new automata that will be created after the trigger of an action in a special state. So X is the automata. Q this is the state uh, before the trigger, the triggering of the of the action, and B is the action. And so, if I say this formula, uh, I, I mean that after the trigger of B at the state Q X of uh, the PCA X, then W W will be uh, created uh, deterministically. Um, this is uh, this is not an issue that this is uh, deterministic because uh, you can always just uh, choose a random number and according to the value of the random number, take a certain action and deterministically creates the, uh, the token. So this is not a, a, rest a restrictive uh, uh, requirement. And here you have the hidden actions that just say 
who are the actions that have been uh, identified. So here you have the composition uh, of uh, U and V. So C and D are supposed to be output action by default, but you can decide to hide D so that X has D as an internal action. So now uh, you can define what does it mean um, to implement. So you have to define what is an environment. So an environment is an automaton uh, which is more or less compatible to A. So I say more or less because it's not uh, the classical definition of compatibility in the literature, uh, because we tolerate that there exists some pair of uh, non-compatible states, as long as that they are never reached by the set of executions. And now you can go further in the definition of implementation. So what is an implementation? It's, not, it's still not perfectly defined, but here this is a, a better idea. Uh, I say that A is implementing B. If for every uh, scheduler that are allowed by uh, the composition of A and uh, E, then there exists another scheduler allowed by the composition of B and E, so that um, E is, uh, is, not allowed, is not able to distinguish uh, A from B. So this is, here again, this is impossible for, for E uh, to uh, to distinguish uh, A and B, uh, but there is a notion of asymmetry. So this is not an equivalence uh, relation relationship uh, because this is for every scheduler uh, on the red. There exists a scheduler on the blue, on the blue side, but the reverse is not true. So you could imagine that A is uh, implementing B, but B is not implementing A. And now uh, uh, I want to define this notion of uh, distinct distinguibility. What does it mean? And so I can define uh, some uh, equivalence classes on the set of executions, and I can define uh, corresponding classes. So let's imagine that X uh, is the set of execution of E composed with A. Uh, y is the set of execution of E composed with B. And Z is a common world. Uh, this is the world of, uh, of the perception of the environment. So you want to uh, define two functions, F uh, and G, uh, that are some projection of the executions to uh, uh, a set of the perception of the environment. So the most common case is just the trace. As we have seen before, trace is just a, a projection on the um, external action. So an environment has access to the external action by definition. So it could be a decent uh, de definition. But the, the problem is that uh, you won't have the monotonicity if you choose this uh, definition. So what is nice with this uh, approach is that you can just uh, add the properties that, that you want. So you can, if you have this triptych, uh, typically here you have uh, the, the red diamond or the, the blue diamond, then this is the, the common world uh, for the execution in the, in the blue circle and the execution of uh, the blue triangle. And so with, with this approach, you can define uh, corresponding executions. So here you have a set of corresponding executions. So you can partition all the executions in uh, equivalence classes, and you can, uh, you can define a corresponding uh, a set of executions. And now you can even go a little bit further uh, into the definition of uh, of uh, implementation. So you can define what is, uh, what are balanced uh, task schedules. So balanced task schedules is two schedules. So that for a, a, every pair of corresponding uh, uh, classes of executions. So here CA and CB are two different uh, um, equivalent classes of executions. And they are uh, corresponding in the sense that uh, uh, their projection in this uh, common world is the same. So this is it. And uh, you want to have uh, the same measure of probability for each pair of uh, corresponding uh, uh, equivalent classes. And now you can def you, you could have the first definition of uh, implementation. You could say that A implements B if for every environment uh, and for every scheduler, there exists another scheduler so that uh, each pair of corresponding uh, uh, set of executions uh, are balanced in the sense that they have the same measure of probability for their respective uh, uh, task schedule. 
but uh, you have a lot of subtleties uh, here. Uh, where do you push the, the fall and uh, it exists? Uh, so the, the quantification is very important uh, to know if you have uh, composability or to have monotonicity. So here, this is the first attempt but, uh, of uh, implementation, but uh, this attempt uh, does, uh, it seems it doesn't uh, ensure monotonicity. So I will, uh, thereafter, I will show another, uh, a, a better attempt. Uh, of course, the implementation can be defined in the same way for a probabilistic configuration automata because this is uh, also a probabilistic signature input output automata. And you can uh, have this question Do we have monotonicity? So, as I, uh, I explained before, um, this notion of monotonicity uh, means that if uh, A is implementing B, do we have if A is implementing XB? If X and XB uh, only differ by the fact that when XA uh, creates uh, XA, uh, creates A, then XB creates B. So you can formalize, I don't want that you read the, all the details, but you can formalize what does that mean? to have this corresponding uh, uh, automata in the upper layer. So you can define what is a, mono a monotonic relationship. So this is a binary, uh, binary relation uh, on the set of uh, uh, automata that have this notion of preservation in the upper level. So if the relationship exists for two uh, automata I and B, then it should exist for the two automata XA and XB where XA and XB are corresponding. And we have shown the, this following uh, theorem uh, that the, the, the implementation relationship uh, can be monotic uh, if you add some uh, slight, uh, yeah, some weak assumption. So you can rewrite this theorem like this. And you can, you could, uh, you could uh, ask the same question for the CQ emulation. And the answer is also yes. So now I finished the, with my presentation. So I'm open to the questions. Of course, I can go more in the details. I, I have some back slides to go into the details for the, for the proof. So it's, uh, it's up to you. Thank you. So you could uh, think about the uh, algorand. So this is dynamic. This, you, this is using some randomness. This is using uh, encryption, uh, but this is using time. So the, the, the algorand uh, algorithm is working with a partial synchronous uh, algorithm. So we want to add a notion of time on it, but you can imagine some other uh, dynamic uh, randomized uh, distributed algorithm with encryption that do not use this notion of time. So I have two examples. You can um, uh, analyze um, uh, permissionless cryptocurrency uh, that, I, that is using um, a randomized uh, dynamic Byzantine agreement. So uh, since the, the consensus number of uh, the asset transfer object is only one, in fact, you can uh, uh, secure emulate it uh, with only uh, uh, Byzantine agreement. And, uh, and and then you do not require uh, you don't require um, uh, timely time uh, time extension or something. And also, if you really want to um, uh, analyze uh, a global blockchain uh, with total order agreement uh, in fully asynchronous uh, paradigm, then you can. Uh, uh, there is a paper which is called the not a coincidence not a coincidence that has been published at this uh, twenty twenty. Uh, from uh, Edith Kedar and all. And here again, you have a notion of uh, uh, randomness. Uh, uh, so they, they, they have a dynamic um, uh, command coin. 
And here again, you have a notion of uh, cryptography, uh, randomness, and then missing. So uh, here are, you have two, yeah, you have two examples of what you can analyze. Yeah. No, not yet. Yet. 